On February 19, 2013, nearly 100 protesters stormed a hydraulic fracturing waste storage site in New Matamoros, Ohio. The group responsible was protesting what they call the, quote, storage and dumping of hydraulic fracturing waste in Ohio. Waste that they claim contains toxic chemicals and radioactive material. The dumping that they refer to is in part the use of injection wells to dispose of the wastewater byproduct of hydraulic fracturing, often called fracking. Dumping has the connotation of irresponsible, uncontrolled release into the environment or discharge into the environment. That's the opposite of injection. We require injection in order to prevent dumping. Scott Kell is a geologist at the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the government body responsible for permitting and regulating injection wells for Ohio's oil and gas industry. According to him, hydraulic fracturing has a long history and little risk. Hydraulic fracturing has been practiced in this country since 1948. And this many years later, 60 years later, we're still looking for our first documented example of a contaminated water supply. So the outcry seems to be disproportionate with the, with the reality here. But opponents of hydraulic fracturing argue that contamination often goes undocumented. One thing that both sides agree on is that the general public knows very little about what this drilling procedure actually entails. Hydraulic fracturing emerged in response to our demand for affordable domestic energy, particularly natural gas and oil, which generated over 25% of electricity in the U.S. in 2011. In energy-rich sections of the U.S., an estimated 35,000 fracking wells are positioned over underground gas or oil-bearing rock layers called shale basins. Energy companies drill deep underground, sometimes as far as two miles. Then the drill turns and moves horizontally. The drill is removed and the well is lined with multiple layers of steel casing and cement to prevent any fluids from leaking out. A perforating tool then creates small holes in the cement casing at the shale layer and a secret cocktail consisting of sand, water, and a small amount of chemicals is shot down the well. The mixture hits and fractures the rock, releasing the oil and gas trapped within it. Depending on the length of the particular well, this process can use anywhere from 2 to 10 million gallons of water, and 20 to 30 percent of that water returns to the surface, along with fluids from the shale, sometimes called brine or salty water. You've got a lot of things that are pretty nasty in that water, and they're not things that you would ever want to just have released into the environment. Dr. Julie Wetherington Rice has been researching and writing about the oil and gas industry since the mid-1980s. You start getting all of the, um, the salts that come back up. It's sodium chloride, calcium chloride, all the salts that are associated with seawater. But this is really concentrated seawater and you get the radioactive metals coming back. According to Scott Kell, these wastewaters can contain radiation, but he claims the levels in Ohio-produced waters have never been high enough to be harmful. But he says regardless, they must be carefully managed. There's two primary ways that that waste stream is managed. Uh, one of those is underground injection for the purpose of disposal. The product comes in via truck. Our operators go out and they hook the truck up and they offload that product into a holding tank. Um, it's not as difficult as what you think it is. John Jack is the Appalachian Region Vice President of Development for Green Hunter Water, a disposal well, brine trucking, and water recycling company with operations in southeastern Ohio. We operate seven disposal wells in West Virginia and Ohio. These underground wells are classified by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as Class II injection wells, designated for oil and gas wastewater. Underground, they look similar to hydraulic fracturing wells, and in fact, many of them are repurposed oil and gas wells. And beneath the layers of steel and cement is a steel and rubber device called a packer, which provides an airtight seal preventing any fluids from rising back to the surface. 
The brine water is then pumped into a sandstone layer with impermeable rock forming a barrier to prevent leakage to other layers. And what happens below ground is monitored by a pressure gauge above. We should be concerned about them because a lot of them are pretty old. And there is a track record of leaks at these facilities. But the track record of injection wells is yet another point of contention. We have injected nearly 300 million barrels, and yet we have not identified a single public or domestic water supply that has been contaminated by the subsurface injection of those waste and the return of that waste back to surface. Concerns have also been raised around the high number of injection wells in Ohio, approximately 200, compared to neighboring states like Pennsylvania and West Virginia. We seem to be permitting them a whole lot faster than US EPA does, and I'm not sure why that is the case. Ohio does not have magic geology that can swallow everything. Without many injection wells, states like Pennsylvania and West Virginia transport much of their wastewater to Ohio. In fact, out-of-state waste accounts for over half the fluids that are disposed of in Ohio. The market controls the need for injection wells. And the reality is, is that uh, from the inception of the program in the early 1980s to present, the Ohio injection industry has always been able to manage the volumes of produced water that are generated. But activists are demanding more regulation. And in 2012, when an earthquake in Youngstown, Ohio, was linked to a nearby injection well, it added fuel to the fire. But there's another way to handle fracking wastewater that avoids problems like earthquakes and injection well leakage, and even addresses hydraulic fracturing's thirst for large amounts of fresh water. The way the industry needs to be going is reusing of this product. We would like to clean that product and offer it back for reuse at drilling locations. It goes through our water treatment process, and what it is, it's a vibrational separation system, which takes almost all the suspended solids out. Dr. Wetherington Rice believes that wastewater recycling programs are the way to go, but thinks they don't go far enough. We actually do not need injection wells. We can recycle or repurpose all of the various waters that comes out of an oil and gas well. Energy and disposal companies are increasingly investing in recycling technology. Both sides of the fracking debate agree that recycling wastewater makes sense, at least for the short term. As far as the long term is concerned, questions and debates will persist around the value of extracting non-renewable fuel resources to feed our growing need for power.